All right, welcome back. Please subscribe right here and uh, hit the notification bell. You'll get notifications for this series and other fun series on this channel, hopefully. Well, I'm hoping you're having fun doing multivariable calculus, but if you're not, there's got to be one of our playlists where there's something fun that we do that's mathematical. Go do one of those. This time, what are we going to do? Again, this is the playlist for multivariable calculus uh, online series. So we're in chapter one, partial derivatives. We're going to do section 1.2 of chapter 1, which is limits and continuity. Last time what we did basically is we did the definition of a limit approaching a value a, b in the plane of a function of more than one variable and where does the function go and we gave the precise definition and the last thing we did in the last video was show how to calculate essentially and show when a limit actually exists at the point using the precise definition. And then we also did one to show along two different paths. If you can show along two different paths, you get a different limit, then that limit doesn't exist. Now what we're going to do today is continuity of a function of two variables. All right, and remember, we're going to do another video. The next video will just be a supplementary video where we do this for f of x, y, z, or more than three variables, three or more variables. Again, we start with one and two because we can actually draw the graph of these in higher dimensions. We can't draw the graph of a function of three variables or more. So then we have to completely abstractly think of how the game plays and just add more coordinates to the scenario. So the next video will be doing this for con limits and continuity for f of x, y, z or higher. Right now for continuity of a function of two variables, x and y, we have that f is called continuous now at a point a, b. If, and I broke it into two scenarios so that you can see specifically, and that, that's exactly what you'll show to be careful to show that uh, a function in one of our examples doesn't exist. It's not continuous at a certain point. We must have to be continuous, first of all, that the limit exists at the point we're going to. And that's the definition we dealt with last time. We call that the limit. If it arbitrarily gets close to this as x gets arbitrarily close to y, b, a, b. And now that another condition, just like in calculus of one variable, we now have to say as in one dimension, as X approaches A, F of X has to approach F of A, and that's continuity in one dimension. Now it's the exact same. That limit has to not only exist, but equal F of A, B now. That's our definition of continuity. So this first condition is what we did last time. That's just a limit existing for F at A, B. That says this writing equals L. That from the last video means that as we get arbitrarily close to AB in a disk, our function can get arbitrarily close to L in an interval. That has to happen and now L has to equal F of AB. That's continuity of two dimensions and it will be the same for three dimensions. It's just now when you're in a three dimensional sphere and you get arbitrarily close to that point in that sphere, <laughs> you have to be able to get arbitrarily close to L in the interval. Remember our range, our image is always the same. It's a one dimensional line. The domain now is gonna get higher and higher dimensional functions of more than one variable. All right, let's do a remark. So a remark about the definition. I know that definition of uh, limits of functions of more than one variable, the precise definition, and then continuity on top of it is confusing at first. So watch, pause and watch the videos as many times as you need to. Slow it down, that's why we do this. You should have just seen how long it took me to draw these pictures, but now well, I will erase them in 30 seconds, but good. So what we're gonna do now is compare the analogy to the one dimensional case to the new one we're doing. I'm assuming you're doing some multivariable calculus class. So you've seen a one dimensional calculus class to get here, there's a prerequisite. In one dimension, we say that first of all, the limit exists if there was a hole, I could get arbitrarily close, but possibly not equal to A. So that says as X gets arbitrarily close to A on my domain, which will be an interval, a sub interval in my possibly larger domain, I say that any point A in there, I'm can, uh, the limit exists at A. If I can get arbitrarily close to X, X gets arbitrarily close to A means that uh, my function, the values get arbitrarily close to L, but not possibly at L. Now with the new definition of continuity in one dimension. In one dimension, it's saying, first of all, you're continuous at that point A. If now, oh, I forgot the other color. That's we can't have, it's intuitively, it's if you can't lift, don't have to lift your pen to draw the curve. 
and there's like three of them in there now. So for continuity at a point A, we have to have, first of all, that limit has to exist and equal L, so it has to exist. And now we have to demand that that limit is equal to F of A. So essentially what that's saying is F of A equals L, that limit where the function actually approaches and exists. We now just had the exact same analogous two-dimensional version of that. Now, when we're in two dimensions, as x, y gets arbitrarily close on any path towards a, b, that means that, first of all, we had to have one, that the limit now as x, y approaches a, b of f of x, y has to exist and equal l, still a finite number. And then two, we have to have the exact same condition, but in two dimensions, we have to have that, that limit as x approach, x, y approach a, b of f of x, y, that has to actually equal f of a, b. And that says, coincidentally, that those will also be equal. So that gives us the same analogous definition in one dimension and in two dimensions. And now in the next video, when we do this and just tr show you a couple examples in three dimensions, the notion of content limits are existing and continuity in three dimensions and is essentially the same, except we can't draw them anymore. We can't draw the surface. Here's the function of one variable. It's a curve. The, the curve is the graph of that function, which we call a curve in the plane. And those are the, they pass the vertical line test. They're nice and well behaved. Now, in two dimensions for a function of two variables, we have a surface, which is the graph, and it's well-behaved. It's going to pass the vertical line test now, too. And we say that it's well-behaved. What does continuity essentially intuitively mean in one dimension? It means what I just said. To draw it, I don't have to lift my pen. Another way of saying that is that curve in the plane has no holes or punctures in it. That's the exact same intuitive thing for what this essentially that whole rant or remark was about. Intuitively, what continuity is saying is that small changes in the point AB near AB will give us small changes in the value L. So you'll get arbitrarily close to L, which is in fact F of AB. This is what, and geometrically, what does that say? It's a nice smooth surface. There's no punctures or holes in the surface now, just like there's no punctures or holes in the curve in the plane. Good. Next. Doing some examples now. The first example we're going to do is classically we want to point out and a lot of time remember look back or try to think back when you did this for a function of one variable. I'm trying to mimic and make a complete analogy of all of these things just for functions of more than one variable now in particular a function of two variables. What's a polynomial of one variable? It's a rational ex or it's a, an expression where every term is it's just the sum of terms where you have a constant times powers of x there's a polynomial and in that it's easier to write out because there's only one variable you can write a and x to the n dot 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 down a and x to the zero but there's a whole lot more combinations you're going to see that we could have you could have one x and one y or one x and three y's or there's so many we don't know so we say that a polynomial and two variables now has x and y's in there and then a term which you can start getting awfully linear algebra but you can double index it because it's touching an x and an m so then there will be a sum of those that's what we're going to call a polynomial and two variables each of the powers are natural numbers so this is, means that they're natural numbers zero or positive integer and this could be any real number that's what we mean by a polynomial of two variables and then again a rational function is a ratio of two polynomials just like a rational function in one variable this is partial fraction decomposition and integration. This is how to deal with all rational functions. A rational function now of two variables is the ratio of two polynomials of two variables. Why did I point this out as my first example? Because also in one dimension, we also have a theorem that says trigonometric functions and polynomials and rational functions and root functions and power functions are all continuous on their domains, we say. And that's exactly what I'm about to say here. Rational functions and polynomials of two variables are also, you go back to the previous videos and remember how to compute a domain of a function of two variables or more than two variables. And as long as the point's in the domain, it's continuous there. You don't have to check. We've checked already. That means that, again, what does that mean? The limit exists and equals f of a, b as you approach a, b. Good. These are, in particular, a couple of specific examples of the first one is a polynomial in two variables. And this one is 
Also in the previous videos, we showed that the limit doesn't exist at zero, but notice zero, zero would be division by zero, so zero is not in the domain of this. So this is continuous anywhere in its domain, which is the punctured plane everywhere except for at the origin zero, zero. Next example. Now, basically, example two is just applying what I just said. Do you understand, hopefully, as the, when it, Charlie Brown, I just dated myself, hopefully you know what Charlie Brown is still. But when they pick up the phone, there's wah, 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 wah on the other side of the phone. It's like, I don't understand what's happening. So I just gave the definition of continuity of a function of two variables. And then I said, polynomials are continuous on their domain. And then I say, compute this limit. This is a polynomial of two variables. And you're like, well, I don't know what to do. It says evaluate. Where do I go? Equals what? What that now tells us is, let's backtrack. What's the domain of this polynomial? The domain is the same thing I look for in a function of one variable. I can't divide by zero. I can't have negatives under even nth roots. I have to have positive values in logarithms, those types of things. I look at this, and again, polynomials have no nth roots. They have all we say is that every term is a product of powers of x and y's and possibly a number. So there can't ever be division by zero. There can't ever be even any nth root. So there's no restrictions. The domain of this is all of R2. What that tells me is all polynomials are continuous on their domain, which is R2, which means I can just evaluate and plug in these two values into this. That was a long story saying it's a polynomial of two variables. Just plug in the values. There's nothing wrong with this. It's continuous everywhere. This equals x is 1. So 1 squared times negative 1 cubed plus 1 cubed times negative 1 squared plus 5 times 1 minus 2 times negative 1. I just kind of plug in the values to compute this limit. That gives me now what? This is equal to, be careful, this gives me negative 1. This gives me positive 1 plus 5 plus 2. Cancel, cancel. So I get 7. The limit is 7. If I did the basic math, you'll see in these videos, I may have to put a correction where I don't mind this mumbo jumbo at all. And then I try to compute numbers and what the, why did it turn into a six? So seven, I hope. <laughs> Next one. Example three wants us to find where, I'll be honest, I'm out of breath because I had the barbecue on and I forgot. I just about burned everything down. Example three, real life, you got to do videos and I'm at home, COVID scenario. This question wants us to find where this function f of x, where it's this rational function again, it's a polynomial over a polynomial and of two variables. And it wants to know it's this function when x, y is not zero because zero, zero is not in my domain. But then they e make it equal zero at zero, zero. We want to know where is this continuous? Is it continuous at zero, zero? We want to know. So first of all, like I said, zero, zero is not in my domain, but because this is a rational function, they've added it in to, uh, and just defined the function to be zero there. What we showed in the last video was, if you look at the fifth video in this, we actually have where we showed that this limit actually exists. So we do have one from the previous video, video number five, when we did uh, the definition of, uh, limits existing we know that the limit i'm not going to do it again it's the epsilon delta stuff yeah watch that video the limit as x y approaches zero zero of two x y squared over x squared plus y squared exists from the previous video and moreover we know too now that the limit as x y approaches zero zero of f of x y is equal to zero which is equal to f of zero zero therefore by definition it's continuous at zero also so this function is continuous on all of r2 we had to check zero because zero wasn't in the domain originally of this rational function but now that we check that limit exists from the previous video and it equals f of zero zero so it's continuous everywhere in our in the entire plane r2 I'm still out of breath one more all we're doing so for the next example for number four we're going to play the exact same game and then we're going to show that be careful can you tell by looking no me neither you have to show it or be very careful in some scenarios we're going to ask the exact same game and all i did was kill the 
squared on the y. Now does where we, we want to know where it's continuous. Again, we check. The domain of the original expression is everywhere except for 0, 0, and then they've defined it to be 0 at 0, 0. But the original, ex this expression, 0 is not in the domain of that. And so first we want to check if that limit actually exists near 0, 0. And coincidentally, it doesn't. When we check two paths, one, if I check along the x-axis, say, I think both the x and the y axis do the same behavior if it's y equals x. What does that tell us? That will tell me f of, that says y is 0. It'll, the same thing will happen if you make x equal 0. It'll kill the top. That says f of x 0 is going to be the function 2 times x times 0 over x squared plus 0 squared, which is 0. So it's the function zero, and that says in particular the limit as x, y approaches zero, zero of f of x, zero is equal to zero along this path. And then what I'm going to do is pick another path where it's not zero. Or I could just coincidentally say pick any path y equals kx, and that also is another argument to show for any k you'll get two different paths. If you pick different k's you'll get a different k path. Maybe I'll do that in a second. For now, What's my argument? I have one path where I get zero along it. Now let's try to get one where I don't get zero. Option two, let's take a different path. Again, when you're making these or suspecting, usually I try to pick an x or y axis, and then I, a lot of the time, try to pick x, y equals x or y equals x squared and try to pick parabolas or lines where you approach and try to see whether you can get two different values. I'm going to now cleverly try to pick the line y equals x and approach along that path. Along the curve, y equals x, we're going to have that f of x, x is equal to 2x squared over x squared plus x squared, which is equal to 2x squared over 2x squared, which is 1. And so that says the limit as x, y approaches 0, 0 of f of x, x now is going to be 1 along this path, which doesn't equal 0. So by our theorem from the previous video, if I have two different paths where I approach along them to 0, 0, and I get different values, that limit doesn't exist. So we are not continuous at 0, even though we do have that f of 0, 0 is 0, and it seems like to defined it there, we still have a problem because the original function doesn't have a limit at 0, 0. In the next video, what we'll do after this is we'll quickly do the notion of limits and continuity for functions of three variables or any number of variables. The scenarios are basically the same. It's just more uh, dimensions. See you next time. Please subscribe right here and hit the notification bell. You'll get notifications for this series and a bunch of other ones on our channel.